Hi, it's Hans Lusklimt here. It's uh, Saturday, November 28th, 2009, and I am video blogging down here from uh, the sunny island of Gran Canaria, where I've gone down to get some sunshine over Thanksgiving weekend. Well, we're going to do some market comments, and since it's uh, the weekend, we can uh, look at more fundamental issues. And I touched on this yesterday about the inflation targeting of the central banks. And the inflation targeting is really central to understand what's going on and to position yourself and invest to see and be prepared for what's coming when it comes to inflation targeting. Because the central banks are hell-bent on their inflation targeting. Now, in a lot of countries, the inflation targeting is explicit. In Norway, it's 2.5% over a certain time frame. In the U.S., it's not explicit like that. But I have personally been told from people high up in the Federal Reserve in the U.S. that the Federal Reserve has got to align themselves very closely to the international standards for inflation targeting, which hoovers around a percent and a half and maybe up to two and a half percent, three percent. Um, that's the interval where people, when the central banks want to be. And they are hell-bent on this. They have their mandate as this inflation target and sometimes low unemployment. In the U.S., it's a little less explicit. It's um, stable prices and low unemployment. Uh, in Norway, it's an explicit inflation target of 2.5% and uh, low employment, of course. So let's look at what's going on right now then, for example. People are starting to save in the U.S. So people are not spending so much money. The same happens all over the world. The Chinese are in a crisis, so they're, they're pumping up even more products, shipping products to the U.S. and lowering their prices. Sh shops are lowering their prices, and there's a general tendency in the shops for consumer items to go down in price, especially the kind of stuff that's made in China. But that is just one factor in the consumer price index, which measures inflation the, and the inflation target of the central banks. So if you have one set of products, that is flat TVs and kitchen appliances and all, all the stuff that comes from China going down, and the central bank can't really do much about that, then the central bank will somehow need to engineer that something else is going up to balance this off and to make sure they reach the inflation target. In Norway, for example, we have an explosion in the cost of transportation. And this is something domestic. This is something that the politicians and the central banks can regulate much more directly than the cost of imported goods. So there's a competition going on right now globally to save an employment and, and to save workspaces for people domestically by lowering products and spewing them out all over the world where people are seeing that prices are going down. So it's a, it's a weird dynamic and you have to be on top of it to know how to invest going forward. You can be pretty sure that imported goods are going down in price because of the increased competition. We are ruling out the currency part here, which is a sort of a, a second uh, dimension you need to look at this. But everything else being equal, you can consider that imported goods are going down in price. And then they need to increase the price of domestic goods. And domestic goods are services produced uh, domestically, uh, food, a, a lot of food stuff is usually produced domestically, transportation, stuff like that. So they're engineering increased demand and other ways to increase the price of domestically produced goods. I mean, they don't care how the price goes up. And they, another thing, important thing is they don't care how much is consumed. So they would, you know... They would be happy to see that consumption going down to half as long as the price is stable. So they would be more than happy to see that, you know, the general standard of living of all Americans is reduced drastically as long as the price level is stable and as long as unemployment is low. You really have to understand that this... It seems benign at first to have these two targets of, of stable prices and low unemployment. But when you really think about what it means that 
everything else is up for grabs. Everything else can be adjusted and manipulated and, and twisted and turned around. Then you really see that it's a like a straitjacket. And it's absolutely not something that the consumers themselves would like if they knew what was going on. Now, one thing is that, you know, the U.S. has a, um, they say that they want a strong dollar. They have a strong dollar policy. That's what they say. But it's important to remember that this is just words. You know, they say, okay, we want a strong dollar. We, we have a strong dollar policy. This is just words. It's not explicit. The Fed doesn't have a mandate for uh, having a strong dollar. It, it doesn't work that way. So, in a sense, the weakening of the dollar is increasing the price of imports. And uh, that is actually helping their inflation target right now. So it could be a temporary thing, but you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of things happening at the same time. And when it comes to the strong dollar policy, it's important to remember that this can change. They can change their mind any day. They can have a meeting in China, and then they can say that, we need to reconsider our strong dollar policy and we need to, they will use words like, we need to uh, rebalance the international strength of the currencies and accept a slightly uh, lower dollar. They, they, will, they will use weird wordings like that to sort of camouflage what's going on. And that's just a policy change. That's just a change of wording. It, it means nothing to them. They, they can do that at the blink of an eye, at the drop of a pen. And uh, that's what they will do eventually because uh, the markets are forcing the dollar down. So, so this will happen whatever they say. And, um, and, and having that uh, as sort of it's, – it's not an explicit goal, a strong dollar. The Fed has no mandate to keep a strong dollar. So it's just words, just words. Now, it's important to remember that uh, the uh, inflation targeting is also, it's also a uh, mechanism to keep things stable. And that's what the power establishment, the big banks, the big money, Wall Street want. They want to keep things stable. I was told by people in, in, you know, high up in the Norwegian banking system, they said, we have to save the banks. We cannot allow the banks to collapse. We have to save them. Because if the banks collapse and they stop lending, there's a contraction in money, contraction in demand, and prices will fall. I mean, the banks really, the commercial banks, a lot of them now owned by the governments, is really an instrument for the central banks to pump out money to make sure that inflation stays at whatever their target is. If that mechanism of pumping money out into the system disappears, they can't reach their inflation target. So when the big banks have trouble, they have to save them. I mean, they can let some minor banks go under. That's a symbolic gesture, I guess. But this is where the too big to fail comes from. It's not too big to fail because, you know, whatever, and people are losing money, and, and uh, it will cause people to lose their jobs and all that. It's too big to fail because if they fail, the money supply will contract, and that will enable, unenable them to meet their inflation targeting. This is complex stuff. I'm, I'm hoping I, I, I'm clearing up some of this and, and uh, uh, making you see that uh, the complexity of this and, and how they've sort of uh, put up this benign, uh, good-looking, uh, explicit uh, targets for the Fed of, of uh, an inflation target, uh, low uh, price, uh, price stability and... Um, low unemployment, but how this really is um, masquerading uh, their uh, deeper uh, meaning and what they're really up to, and that is to keep the power establishment in place, to make sure the big banks don't go under, to make sure that uh, Wall Street keeps ticking as uh, it always has. And um, you, really, you, you need to, to unveil this to see it. Well, that's it today.